1943, what became known as the Green Revolution began when Mexico, unable to feed its growing population, shouted for help. Within a few years, the Ford and Rockefeller Foundations founded the International Rice Research Institute in Asia, and by 1962, a new strain of rice called IR8 was feeding people all over the world. IR8 was the first really big modified crop to make a real impact on world hunger. In 1962, the technology did not yet exist to directly manipulate the genes of plants, and so IR8 was created by carefully crossing existing varieties, selecting the best from each generation, further modifying them, and finally finding the best. Here is the power of modified crops. IR8, with no fertilizer, straight out of the box, produced five times the yield of traditional rice varieties. In optimal conditions with nitrogen, it produced 10 times the yield of traditional varieties. By 1980, IR36 resisted pests and grew fast enough to allow two crops a year instead of just one, doubling the yield. And by 1990, using more advanced genetic manipulation techniques, IR72 was outperforming even IR36. The Green Revolution saw worldwide crop yields explode from 1960 through 2000. Fifty percent of the world's population is vitamin D deficient, and we believe that it has serious health consequences for both children and adults alike. Major cause is lack of sun exposure. Humans have always depended on the sun for their vitamin D requirement, and it's over the past 40 years that it's been suggested that you should never be exposed to direct sunlight. That is one of the major causes of the vitamin D deficiency pandemic. Again, everybody thinks about vitamin D preventing rickets in children. We don't see rickets any longer, so people are not thinking about vitamin D. It's incomprehensible.
During this time, my goals are going to be to talk about the phenomenon that we may share in part with other animals in our language, and that is emotion. And also talk about some new technology, brain imaging, functional magnetic resonance imaging, that we applied to try to answer some very old questions about how does motivation and emotion work. I'm going to present you with the scenario first and some of you may be familiar with. This was developed by Pavlov over a century ago. And in this scenario, the dog is presented with the sound. The dog waits, and then it'll see food powder, and this happens repeatedly. Things start to happen in the middle of what we've already understood point. Interesting thing, 